Good day, everybody. Sorry, bad accent. Now, here we go. This is what we're talking about. The Fokker 28 from Just Flight. Absolutely beautiful. We're in Australia here, part of Bordeaux or something in the north. I think it's a free airport. Yeah, uh, very good one. I guess it's a mining town. Anyway, um, yeah, this the best aircraft in Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator, behind the DC-6, of course. But anyway, we'll take it. Yeah, this is filling the gap until the miracle happens and the Cool Sky DC-9 arrives, or a 737-200 Fly JCM. Who, who knows? Anyway, this is amazing. So let's get right into it. So beautiful, hey? Eh? Look at this thing. Absolutely beautiful. So there's been already four streams or maybe more uh, all doing the same thing which is great going through the checklist from start to finish cold and dark so you don't need me to do that as professional pilots um, who uh, who've done that you don't need me I'm far from professional in flight sim actually in many things but there you go it's another story so the point of this video is the autopilot here we go this thing here um, you're probably you not used to first generation autopilots with the modes uh, this one's also a little bit funky but there we go well let's have a look at it so um, yeah two two parts well three parts of the autopilot you have the um, glare shield here you got the mode selectors the flight director modes the um, heading and nav sources and um, radials or ILS um, courses and here you have the, the radios the two VORs so pretty cool the other thing is the autopilot and um, flight mode sorry flight director mode annunciator here this too that's kind of useful to know exactly what mode you're in of course you can look where the knobs are selected but here's also good because you're about right next to the instruments um, oh yeah of course here you have the altitude selector where the plane will level off at depending on the mode yeah anyway so here we go uh, yeah the other thing the last thing is we've got the autopilot um, control here I think they call it the controller but this is where you actually turn the autopilot on and put the yaw damper in got to do that now actually um, just about to take off so yeah there's two you can see here there's color coded uh, we have um, horizontal modes in brown roll and we have vertical modes pit, mode pitch here in blue so if um, we take off and we engage the autopilot we're going to be in roll mode and pitch mode which are the, is they call it basic mode basically if you're 15 degrees nose up and wings level engage the autopilot the plane will carry on at that attitude that's the plan um, until you change the attitude with the pitch here this selector you can pitch the nose up or down uh, I think if you hold I think it's every two seconds is a degree I, I've just found if if you want to change say 500 feet a minute climb or descent you hold it for like one two seconds and let go something like that I've found out worked okay good and then um, you'll be in roll mode if you want to turn the plane manually this is spring loaded it's pretty cool I'm holding the, the mouse down here um, bank until you get the desired heading roll out let go plane will level off pretty cool hey eh? spring loaded and this of course too spring loaded returns back to center good uh, you can put the autopilot on and kick out these modes or one of them if you or both by hitting these switches or flicking these switches here of course you see it's here in in means on of course okay that's basic mode and that's the autopilot controller on the glare shield up here you have like I said before um, so you'd be in pitch and roll they I can't press them in yet but they would be illuminated and then if you wanted to change into say heading which we have our heading selected on the runway heading here then you just switch the heading and the plane would kick out of roll and turn into heading mode and then instead of using switch the bank down there then we can select the heading here and the plane will um, get banked to the heading and we can see the flight director here is banked so guiding us to 
bank to the right to follow the heading. Of course now and that's because I have the mode selector in heading. If I turn that to VOR or localizer, you can see well actually it will do the same. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. But that would be um, what I meant to say was this would be uh, if we had a if we were intercepting a radial and the needle was active and the deviation needle was centering then the and we were in VOR lo localizer mode selector then the um, flight director would then guide us to the to the um, radio okay cool so we're going to be in heading for takeoff we have uh, the manual says pitch 10 degrees up I found that overshoots V2 plus 20 even so I tend to go like 13 or 14 or well, 13 degrees nose up but you're going to be pitching for speed anyway and you can see here um, I'm gonna go. No, I'm not gonna look too much. Where are we? Yeah, I'm gonna say, let's say one, 160 knots. Then we would have also a, a fast and slow indicator here for our speed. But that's not really. I'm, I'm talking more about this, the autopilot here today. So good. Hope that makes sense. Um, so just to recap very quick. We turn on the autopilot here. Then we're in basic mode. Then we change the mode that we want here to heading. For, um, vert um, for horizontal beam would be to intercept the course or the ILS if you've got it selected and that's it uh, then if we're in pitch mode that would hold the pitch of the aircraft of course then you have to control the speed with the throttles no auto throttle in this thing yee just the way I like it height would be um, level enough altitude hold can we say uh, IAS that is um, yeah, if you've flown the CRJ you'll be quite familiar with that speed climb um, so if you engage that the plane will hold the climb speed that you're at and um, adjust the vertical speed depending on your power setting so of course if you uh, push forward if you want the plane to climb more but it'll keep the speed as the IAS is selected and um, so you can use that in the climb if you're in level flight um, select a lower altitude click IAS and to begin the seat descent just pull back on the power of course then the plane has to pitch down to maintain speed pretty easy cool and glide is um, glide slope for the ILS <coughs> simple okay that's it uh, a couple of gotchas very quick before we take her up in the air uh, yes Make sure you have the DME on here because um, then the two here you see the two DME uh, readouts will not show. Uh, sorry, hold on. There you go. I'll have to. Uh, yeah, even <laughs> one of the professional streamers I saw, he was he just taken off and was confused a little bit by this. And I was I wasn't watching live. I was kind of shouting, "Turn on your DME!" And he, he was good. He was he he found it in the end. There we go. So turn on your DME here then your DME will display uh, another little it's not a gotcha it's just a little quirk is um, yeah if in normal first generation VOR nav planes if you've got nav source on nav 1 sorry let's start again if you've got two stations tuned which I have and we're picking them up on the ground which is cool it's kind of why I'm at this airport uh, nav 1 would be the source you can see the light is on here is nav one nav two is on now so if nav so um nav one was tuned and that was the source then you that would display here on the hsi of the captain and nav two would display on the first officer's hsi but in this plane if you select nav one it displays on both okay <clears throat> and you see nav two if i now switch you'll see the dma changes to 115 miles and on both and of course I have a different course set so the needle changes let's go back to nav 1 yeah so that's a bit quirky it takes a bit of getting used to <coughs> but you can easily switch between the two in flight just make sure you're probably in heading mode that would help so the plane doesn't start swinging all over the place um, yeah and the DME I was a bit confused by this at first I thought this would be the nav 1 DME because it's on my side no the not nav one but the selected nav source is displayed here on the HSI and the other tuned nav is here DME is here okay what you can also do on 
is a bit confusing. What you can also do on this is when we're moving, because there's no ground speed, is it tells us how many minutes are at our ground speed to the station, um, what's our ground speed or not. Cool. Test function. Working. Cool. Everything works on this plane. It's amazing. The lighting is amazing. The graphics are amazing. Look at the textures. The uh, performance is amazing. The sounds are the best of any plane. Uh, maybe the flights in labs is good, but anyway. Um, yeah, everything. The animations of the switches. It's just unbelievable. Oops. Okay, there we go. Anyway. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. So we're all good. Um, going to take it off in, into the air now and um, show the uh, autopilot in motion. I'll just cut the video and make a part two. So part one, autopilot overview. <laughs>